Good day, ladies and gentlemen. It is May of 2021, and finally, after long last, we have Wolfenstein 2009. And I gotta say, uh, that video turned out pretty well, if I do say so myself. That took almost two months to do, but it was worth it. I just kept tweaking and tweaking and moving around audio and uh, changing whole ideas and stuff like that. I started out kind of negatively disposed to Wolfenstein The New Order, but as I started thinking about it during the video production process, I realized that Wolfenstein New Order wasn't that bad, and it still deserves to be held up pretty highly. It's just that I personally like Wolfenstein 2009 more than New Order. Uh, you know, it's one of those things where I was also going to say that uh, the B.J. Blazkowicz scene in um, Wolfenstein 2009 was better than New Order's, but I cooled on that and just said that they're both valid, that I personally like Wolfenstein 2009's B.J. more. Uh, you'll probably see that happen in a lot of videos going forward where I'm not going to just definitively say that this or that is better than something else. I'm just going to specifically say it's my opinion that I personally like this or that more because it's hard to say which BJ is better. You know, the harder edged one is cool in his own right. Uh, whereas the classical one, I think I like more just because I like the classical hero. And you still see classical heroes here and there uh, in modern media like Rebute Gilliman. The old big booty Gilliman, he's still a classical hero. You know, Kaifus Kane, he's still doing good. Uh, Wolfenstein 2009 uh, is just a game that, man, people just beat up on that thing because there were so many modern games coming out in 2009, you know, with the COD crap and all the rest. And, you know, when you have that regenerative health, there's going to be that, you know, comparison. And that just, it wasn't fair. And so I'm glad I was able to finally set the record straight on that particular game. As I was working on that game, though, or the game review, I should say. Yeah, because I secretly work for Raven Software. That'd be awesome. But alas, that's not to be. I kept thinking about the old George Lucas quote of, Movies aren't finished, they're abandoned. Uh, in all reality, George, could you have not abandoned uh, Star Wars to the uh, tender ministrations of Disney? But anyway... Uh, now that Wolfenstein uh, 2009 is done, I can get to work on uh, two future videos. Uh, and that's going to be uh, a comic review of Ant and a game review of Mech Assault. Hopefully I'll get the rest of the footage recorded uh, this weekend when I do the live stream. Ant is a comic that I completely stumbled across. I had no idea it existed. It is basically um, Spider-Man mixed with Spawn uh, that kind of does its own thing. Uh, you have sort of the uh, the character is a lot like Peter Parker, except um, instead of being a weedy, nerdy dude, it's instead a curvaceous hot chick. So already, and the artwork is, uh, shall we say, a bit, um, well, it's not suggestive, ladies and gentlemen, because there is some out-and-out -out nudity, but anyway, it's damn good. It is a good comic, not just because you've got the thickest superhero ever. It actually has particularly good writing, but... It has some spawn influences because the main character can't remember who they are. But the thing is, unlike with Spawn, with Spawn, within the first few issues, we know that Spawn is Al Simmons. But with Ant, we don't know if this person is actually a real superhero or it's all in her head. It's pretty neat how that works. Unfortunately, the entire series ends on a goddamn cliffhanger. But according to Wikipedia, apparently it's going to be finished, um, I think, in June? So here's hoping it's good, but it's non-woke, and there's a lot of cool shit I can talk about in that, and hopefully it'll drive plenty of views, because, of course, I'm going to have the most um, salacious uh, thumbnail I can possibly have. Uh, as for Mech Assault, I'm really looking forward to that game review, because it's a franchise I haven't talked about before, and I love doing that, because I can go into the background and talk about where, you know, the battle tech universe came from. It's going to be awesome. I don't know how many views it's going to get, but who cares? Uh, the whole purpose of doing YouTube, for me, is not to get, you know, Raid Shadow Legends money. Although, uh, Raid, if you want me to uh, shield your product, I would definitely love to say Raid Shadow Legends for four grand. Uh, I would do that uh, quite willingly. And I'd also like to, sh to shield you the Ridge Wallet and Dollar Shave Club. Because money is good, and you pay your money. And he takes chances. But anyway, uh, I love. I, I really want to talk about Battletech because it's a fairly interesting universe slash franchise. I don't think it's as compelling as, say, um, Warhammer 40k, but it's still worth getting into. 
Uh, Mech Assault is just a really fun game. I actually have uh, another video on another um, Battletech game called Mech Warrior uh, for the Super Nintendo. That is a remarkably good game. If you have not played Mech Warrior on Super Nintendo, you definitely need to, even if the UI could be better. Uh, figuring out how to actually start the game, not easy. Uh, speaking of videos, since I can only do so many videos a month due to having to work all the time, I'm reintroducing the Piddly Crap video, and that is I'm going to be having little gameplay episodes where I, like, play 30 minutes of a game and just yabber. That way y'all at least get some content each week. I, I just don't have that much time, and you know what? Quality versus quantity, you know? I could try to put out some 10-minute piece of crap review, or I could spend, you know, a month and get out something really good like Wolfenstein. So I choose that. Uh, let's see. Uh, can I continue on with Mech Assault until I finish that game? And then the live stream will switch to... I don't know yet. A part of me wants to do Warhammer 40k Fire Warrior. Another part of me wants to do some sort of Doom thing. And then another part wants to do another game entirely. My phone just went off again. There's a lot of stuff I want to do. Not sure what it's going to be yet. Um, as for gun videos, I've got two planned. But it's been a bloody monsoon out there. Uh, for the last week, so I haven't been able to get to the range. Uh, one gun that I really... I've already reviewed it, but it's the grips. I'm waiting for uh, better fitting grips to come in. I discovered these grips quite by accident on the old eBay. Dun, 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 dun. It's the stacker grip. Look at that, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, it's a Mercury Dime grip. This is a Rock Island M200. I've already reviewed this uh, particular firearm. Very good quality. Uh, very... Well, it was inexpensive. But these are uh, uh, Colt Detective Special Grips. They almost fit. Almost. Uh, I'm actually commissioned some that'll actually fit the gun. Uh, I didn't think they'd do it, but they actually will. So that's cool. I'm not going to shoot this gun until I get those grips in. But the very idea that you can have Mercury Dime Grips, it's really, really cool. I I'm really quite pleased with these grips, even though they don't fit 100% perfectly. Uh, what's also cool is uh, one of these dimes is actually 1940, which is uh, the year my grandfather was born. Uh, I'm not going to send these back or anything. I'm just going to keep them. One day I might get a Colt Detective Special. You never know. I'm, I'm going to be perfectly frank, ladies and gentlemen. Once the prices of firearms come down a little bit, I probably will get a Colt Detective Special just so I can put those grips on there. Why? Because I'm a gun nut. No, not really. A gun nerd. I don't have enough uh, tactical crap to be a gun nut. But anyway, uh, can I do a review of these grips? Uh, you can find these on eBay. I think the web store is Get a Grip on it, which uh, is fitting. Uh, once I have that done, I will hopefully make it to the rifle range or the outdoor range so I can shoot this pistol. This right here is my uh, Remington 1858. Actually, this is the Remington New Model Army, and the only 1858 about it is the uh, cylinder uh, pin there. I'll let you dump the cylinder out. I'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, this is a um, uh, Pieta 1858. Pretty well made pistol, actually, especially for the price I paid. Now, of course, you can't really find these anymore because you can't find anything firearms related. Um, I did have two. I already took this to range twice and had dumpster fires twice. One thing I'm going to tell you is pretty depressing about this particular handgun, ladies and gentlemen, is the fact that this was the last handgun my uh, stepfather ever shot before he died from pancreatic cancer. The best part is he got a bullseye with the uh, shot. So this gun has uh, a lot of sentimental value, and it is a pretty good gun. Uh, the biggest problem I had, and the reason why the two range sessions were dumpster fires, was uh, I don't have the right size caps, and of course you can't get the right size caps. Um, so, yeah. I was able to buy, finally, some slick shot nipples. The nipples are what the percussion caps go on that sets off the charge and all the rest. Um, the slick shot nipples should fix my cap problem, because I can't get the right size caps for the smaller nipples that come with the gun. Now, the 1858 Remington, and I'm not going to do this on camera because it does, it, I'm sure I'll end up dropping the goddamn cylinder, is you can pull out the cylinder axis pin right here. You pull it out and out pops the cylinder. Now everyone talks about how great that is because you can do a quick chain cylinder. That's not what it's there for. What it's there for is for the easy cleaning of the cylinder because black powder, very corrosive. Pirate X powder, which is what I use, eh, more so. You've got to clean this thing as soon as you get it home. And uh, my dumpster fire range trip had a ball stuck in the cylinder. I accidentally uh, double loaded and um, I couldn't get 
it out. I couldn't even get it out. Uh, I couldn't even rotate the cylinder to get the cylinder out of the gun. I had to uh, take a uh, brass punch, beat down the, the ball so I could rotate the cylinder. Then I had to get a nipple wrench, which I didn't have. And believe me, you can't find those either. I had to modify the nipple wrench I bought and then finally knock out the ball that was stuck. And then one of the balls was so stuck in there that I had to use a drill to get it out. So, yeah, a bit of a dumpster fire, but we're going to get this out there. But in the time it took me to get all those supplies, the gun had, of course, acquired some rust, which was annoying. But, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, we got this. We're going to be making a review of this very soon. All right. So, uh, sadly, I'm going to be canceling the uh, coin videos that I wanted to make for any of you who remember that back in the early part of this year. My God, this year feels like it's been going on for centuries. Uh, I was going to do a coin review thing. Uh, just not going to do it because I don't have time. And I also just don't really have the motivation. Uh, with the economy being like it is right now, I do recommend uh, getting into silver stacking just in case. Don't go nuts about it and like spend all your life savings on it, but get a little bit of silver here and there, you know, just in case the dollar takes a super nosedive. I mean, already inflation is going through the roof. I think like meat has gone up like 15%. It's ridiculous. And there are indeed shortages going on in the United States today. Uh, it's actually kind of weird and a little scary because uh, I went to the local barbecue place, was going to get a barbecued chicken, and um, they were out of chicken. It's the weirdest thing. I was going to get a pizza just the other day from uh, uh, Sam's Club. They're out of pizza. It's like, it's the weird. It, it's. To actually have shortages is weird. At least we don't have gas shortages in Texas. Um, but, yeah, it's pretty nuts. Uh, and I'm just going to do coin showcase uh, playhouse. What we got here is some lag. Yeah, look at that, ladies and gentlemen. This is uh, a silver round. It's kind of like a silver ingot, except, it's r except you throw it onto the ground. It's kind of like a silver ingot, except, uh, well, it's round. This is from... Atmex. Atmex is a little overpriced compared to some other things, but not by too terribly much. And they generally can be trusted to give you legitimate product. Uh, here's another coin that I'm quite fond of. I wanted to get more of these, but I haven't been able to uh, justify the cost. This is a... Um, shit. There we go. Aha! A Maria Teresa Toller. She evidently was a... Um, uh, Austro-Hungarian monarch at one time and was popular enough to have a coin named after her. There's more history on that. I do want to eventually make a video on that particular coin, but I wanted one of those for years. Atmex gets quite a bit of money for those, but at least you know it's going to be real. But I've actually done silver stacking and coin collecting since I was a kid. And what we have here is an example of uh, one of my silver eagles. These things are ridiculously expensive. This is a uh, 86. Let's see if we can get that to actually focus on that because it is kind of shiny it's 1986 first year issue of the silver eagle uh it was probably a better idea to get start silver stacking years ago but yeah it's never too late to start uh let's see what else we have and what we have for the remainder of the video is talking about random hippy dippy crap adding that towards the end this time and the hippy dippy crap is threefold the first thing is go hard or go home Always go hard if you can. Don't settle for just a ham sandwich and a uh, good day. Always push yourself beyond. Uh, always push yourself beyond the goal that you have. You know, if you have a goal here, once you achieve it, keep going further and further. You know, I remember back, you know, in 2019 when I was just getting my life back into order. You know, I was like, I just want to be able to buy an AK. A pretty simple goal, but I achieved it. And. You know, you just got to keep doing that. You got to keep pushing. Go beyond the furthest you think you can go. The next thing is... Um, damn, I forgot what it was. There's three things. Oh, yeah, there we go. Um, we must live in the world we live in, not the world we want. But we must try to make the world we live in as good as the world we want. Sometimes we can't do that. Sometimes bad things happen, like, you know, people die from pancreatic cancer. But instead of letting yourself get, you know, horribly depressed and never doing anything, just keep trying to live your life anyway and try to make the world 
you live in as good as the world you wanted even though this person has died or this bad thing has happened don't give up just because the world gets bad here and there you know keep trying to achieve your dreams and speaking of achieving your dreams don't make excuses don't make them Believe me, I made many an excuse. One of the things I didn't learn until the latter days of 2020 is every time I said I can't do something, I was actually lying to myself because what I really meant to say was I don't want to do something. So like, for example, I always used to say I'm bad at art. Well, that's not really true because I never tried to do anything artistic. When I, th when I say art, I really mean drawing, like drawing a picture. I've always said that I'm bad at drawing, but that's a lie. I never tried to draw. And when I say try, I don't mean try to draw, you know, the fucking TMNTs the first time using a Bic pen on a piece of notebook paper. No, I'm talking about, you know, I watched the YouTube videos, the tutorials on how to draw, tried that and then failed. No, unless you try, unless you actually put forth the time and effort to do something, you didn't really try it. You just, you know, maybe scribbled something and said, oh, I'm bad at it. You can't do that. Actually try it or just admit to yourself that you don't want to do it. One of the things that made me realize that I was just lying to myself was, and this is another depressing thing, but whatever, it's a good example. Uh, my uh, stepdad and I were going to go play pool. Unfortunately, we didn't get to do that. But one of the things I started to say, and I'd already started to realize that I was kind of lying to myself about things. One of the things I started to say was, oh, I'm bad at pool. But then I thought to myself, have I ever played pool? And the answer was no. I had like played around with the pool cue when I was like 10, but that's not playing pool. That's like, that, that, that means it's, when you say you're bad at something, make sure you're actually bad at it. Because one of the ways to achieve happiness in life is you don't just sit around being negative. And it can be something as simple as saying, I can't do this. Unless you know you can't do whatever it is, don't say it. Because then you'll start to believe it. And then you'll start to think that you really can't do anything. But if you say, oh, I haven't tried this. Or, you know, I really don't want to do do that. You know, I, I don't want a cattle rope or something. That's the first thing that came to mind because rodeo and shit. I've never wanted to like rope cattle. That does not appeal to me in the slightest. But I'm not going to say I can't do it because I never tried to do it. I just don't want to. I don't really want to wrestle with the piece of livestock that does not appeal to me. And so, you know, I guess the thing is, having been so negative most of my life up until the last two years, you know, I, I look back and I think to myself, I'd actually just kind of put myself in this hole of depression because I just didn't allow myself to be happy. And that's the thing. you got to allow yourself to be happy. You've got to allow yourself to not to actually f experience some positivity. And you're not going to do that if you keep saying you can't do something, even though you don't know if you can do it or not. Uh, let's see. What else do we got here? Uh, comics and books. I finally started reading the Spawn comic. I'd watched the film and read about the Spawn comic, but I never actually read it. Uh, so far, I finished the first two trade paperbacks, and I gotta say, that comic is not what the memes imply it to be. Uh, the writing is pretty ridiculously good. There's very little action in the first two trade paperbacks. There's a lot of dialogue, and the dialogue is actually legitimately good. Uh... What's kind of funny is the second trade paperback is really damn good. And you look at the writer page, and it's basically a who's who of comics. You've got Neil Gaiman, Alan Moore, and... I can't remember his name. Ah! Please wait while I try to... While my 256K of RAM tries to remember that guy's name. Frank Miller! And Frank Miller, all working on goddamn Spawn. It's great! And the art is absolutely beautiful. I mean, when you think of, like, 90s art, 90s art really isn't very good. I tried to reread the Boba Fett comic after all these years, and it the Boba Fett comic has that 2000 AD aesthetic that it's kind of hard to tell what's going on sometimes, but Spawn, like, everything is just so beautifully detailed. It's amazing. Um, so, yeah, it's easy to see why Spawn got so popular. Uh, uh, the main villain, Wynn, I can't remember his first name, uh, he doesn't even really factor into the first two trades. Uh, it's really kind of interesting how they really uh, don't immediately go to him. Chapel. 
Chapel is an interesting villain in that he kind of just shows up, but they build him up a bit, and he actually has a legitimate, you know, rivalry with Al Simmons. It's it's remarkably well done. Uh, when the young bloods show up, it kind of reminds you that this is a 90s comic. The young bloods, for those who don't watch Linkara, were basically a lame uh, X-Men knockoff. And, yeah, it's just not... They're not very good, but Spawn... I like Spawn's character in this. Spawn is kind of just like a regular good guy. He's not like this angry, angsty hero. He's like, look, man, I've got some problems to deal with. He, like, literally says that. You know, I just, I just find that kind of funny. Also, they this is one of those times where I'm sure they get rid of this later in the series, but uh, he has, like, limited powers that he can use, and if he uses too much, he'll die again and go to hell. It's kind of interesting that they would limit the hero like that, because I'm sure they get rid of it, because that's kind of writing themselves into a corner. But Spawn, if you've never read the comic, do so. At least the first two trades are good. I'm working on the third now, but first two trades, well worth reading. As for novels... I'm actually canceling a novel review on Star Trek Debtor's Planet. Uh, Debtor's Planet is a good book. Uh, I forget who wrote it, but just look up Debtor's Planet. It's a fairly popular Star Trek TNG novel that I believe was written shortly before Deep Space Nine because this features uh, a more villainous Ferengi. Uh, Ferenginar doesn't exist, but Ferengal exists. Uh it brings back the uh, 20th century 80s guy, Steve Castle, from uh, the season one episode. And he's actually a legitimately well-written character. He's not just a one-note, you know, capitalism character. In fact, the Ferengi don't really practice capitalism as uh, what they what the whole plot of the book is. The Ferengi show up at this um, Bronze Age level planet and build it up into a modern day or modern as of Star Trek TNG economy. Uh but they're not using capitalism. It's a command economy run by the Ferengi, uh, and they have work permits. You know, starting a business is very difficult, if not outright impossible. Much more like a different thing that starts with an S. But anyway, one thing, there's, there's a few little things in that novel that don't make a lot of sense. Like a Ferengi uh, marauder is somehow on par with a galaxy class starship. Yeah, not buying that. Uh, it does feature uh, Wesley Crusher somewhat heavily, and he's not as annoying as he usually is, and he's crushing on this uh, bug babe, uh, but he knows he has no chance because evidently um, uh, males in that bug babe society are basically just uh, breeding stock. Oh, dear. Uh, there's a few other things, too. Uh, there's some One of the best parts about the book is it has that peril and humor that TNG was well known for. So, like, the first... The, the episode, it might as well be a Star Trek episode, and it could be made on a Star Trek budget, too. The first part of the novel has Worf and uh, Riker just chilling, watching, uh, a uh, watching a film, like watching an action film. And I would love to see it, because one of the ma one of the characters in the action film uh, has, like, this lead pipe and is just batting bullets out of the air. Data doesn't get it. Worf kind of does, and it's really kind of, it's really cool. And Rambo 4 exists, and Worf discovers it. How did they know uh, that... No, Rambo 5. Rambo 5 exists. So, Rambo Last Blood. I, I can see um, Worf getting into that. Uh, let's see. They also talk about the uh, eugenics wars, and the eugenics wars in that are kind of weird. Uh, there's two elements. One element I can't remember, but the one that stuck in my mind was Khan evidently had uh, laser weapons and magnetic shielding and destroyed the USS Enterprise, the aircraft carrier, uh, in the Sea of Japan. And that was the turning point of the war against um, Khan. I just find that kind of interesting. That was back when, you know, something like that could happen in 1996. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm General Lotz, and I am here to stay because YouTube, while it's not perfect, you know... I really do enjoy, you know, bringing all of you entertainment, you know, showing you stuff you might not have heard of before. And that's really the point of YouTube, you know. Yeah, you know, you've got all the political crap. Yeah, you got all the Fortnite, you know, kids. You got the COD boys and all the rest. But, you know, there's a lot of good stuff that you can still find on YouTube. Speaking of which, I can go off on another tangent. I discovered this uh, dollar store animated series. Uh, called Final Faction. It reminded me of the early 2000s, and the animation... Okay, this is, for me, 
as an old codger like myself, even though I'm not that old, this goes to show you how fast technology changes. The CG in a dollar store animated series would have been state beyond state of the art in 1995. Okay, that's crazy. The writing and stuff in that dollar store CG animated series is, you know, remarkably, you know, 90s. There's no wokeness to it. It's just, you know, good guys versus bad guys. What's nothing wrong with that? Uh, it's just, it's remarkably good. And it's not cringe. There's a difference between something that's cheesy and something that's cringe. Cheesy is something that comes out naturally. Cringe is like, that'll make the kids laugh, said the guy in the boardroom who's never even seen a TV show. So... It's good. Check out Final Faction. You can find it on YouTube. It's also a, a dollar store line of action figures. Uh, I don't really collect action figures anymore due to not having enough room, but they would make me want to buy the toy if I did have room for them. Okay, I've yabbered on long enough, and so I'm General Lots wishing you good stacker grips. Stacker grips. And good. Um, Silver Eagle. Eh, there we go. No. Whatever. Makes you happy. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing, and if you can, please consider supporting me on Patreon so that I can continue bringing you this great content.